God bless you. I am Apostle Barry Glover. I welcome you to this faith instruction. Let us pray. Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We exalt you, Lord. And we lift up the name of Jesus, the only name given whereby men must be saved, the name of Jesus. Salvation is not in no other name, no, no other person. Salvation is in Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, for saving us, healing, delivering. Thank you for great prosperity. Thank you for revelation from the Word today. Thank you for your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The message is titled, Everything That Happens is not God's will. Everything that happens is not God's will. I know you've heard, I've heard on many occasions, you know, if you attended uh, a funeral and you've heard people say, well, it was the Lord's will to call brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so home, or if it's a child, teenage boy or something. Well, it was the Lord's will for him to come home. Well, the message today is everything that happened is not God's will. You know, when people are shot dead while in the act of stealing in some convenience store, in the bank or something like that, you know, uh, that's not God's will. It's not God's will for them to be killed. It's not God's will for them to be in there stealing in the first place. The Word of God said, Thou shalt not steal. And, you know, and it's a sad thing, and it's a dishonorable thing, that when you know when the preacher, some preachers, when they uh, give the eulogy, they will say that it was God's will for the young man to come home when the young man was out about doing wrong and stealing, and because of his wrongdoing, it brought about his destruction. And they're gonna say that that's God's will. No. It's not God's will that any man perish. It's not God's will that people be destroyed. The thief coming not but for the steal, the kill, and to destroy. Jesus came so that we, we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. It's God's will for us to live. It's not God's will for people to die prematurely. And people need to stop lying saying that it's God's will. You know, people, uh, they, they commit suicide. And the preacher said, well, the Lord warned them to come home. The Word of God says, Thou shalt not kill. People take overdoses of drugs. And then the preacher says, Well, the Lord give it, and you know, He needed some flowers in heaven. People need to stop lying. I'm going to read to you in the Word of God, Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11. And God says, Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure and the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. God has no pleasure in the death of wicked folk. You know, wicked folk out there doing wicked things, and, and of course the evil things that they're doing, uh, they get a harvest from, from what they're doing. You know, the people that go in to rob the bank, you know, there are times folk have been killed there while they was in the process of uh, robbing that institution. They got a harvest, you see. That was a wicked thing that the people were doing, and in the process of trying to, to complete that act, they were, uh, they were killed. God has no pleasure in that, because the word of God that does not change says, Thou shalt not steal. That's right. The little boys that get killed out in the streets, and the little girls that get killed out in the streets while being part of gangs, you know, it's not, that's not God's will. It was not God's will for them to be a member of the gang in the first place. It was not God's will for them to be in the gang. It was not God's will for them to go, to go about gang banging. And because of what they were doing, it resulted in their death. And then, you know, when they have the funeral on many occasions. You've heard it and I've heard it too. And the preachers need to stop. They need to stop lying. That is me. And I'm talking about the preachers that's lying. I'm talking about, well, the Lord wanted them to come on to the house. No. 
God said, choose life. Choose life that, that you may live and that your children may live. God didn't say go out there and kill, have, kill, you know, cause yourself to be killed or whatever. Go out and kill someone so you can. And everybody that the preacher say is going home to be with the Lord. All of those folk don't go home to be with the Lord. Some of those folk go into hell fire. Paul said, I knew you were going to say it. You're right. You, you, you knew I was going to tell you the truth. That's right. A lot of folks say, you know, folk going to heaven. <laughs> a lot of folks that they say in heaven are not in heaven. Some of those folk are not there. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 32 says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that died, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live Ye, it is, it is God's will that our days on earth be as the days of heaven. And of course, there is not any distress nor disease in heaven. I like that statement. I'm going to say it again. It is God's will that our days on earth be as the days of heaven. And of course, there is not any distress nor disease in heaven. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 21 says, that your days may be multiplied. God wants us to live long and strong, I would say, and healthy and wealthy. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. That your days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. Now, there are people, you know, I've heard people say they're catching hell. But well, there are people that, you know, uh, are really in hellish situations, in hellish uh, conditions. You know, they say they're, you know, catching hell. And hell is a spirit, and hell is on this planet. There are people that's having many difficulties. Yes, you know, but, but that's not God's will. You know, some folks say, well, you know, the Lord wants us to be like that, to really be abused, mistreated like that. Uh, it's the Lord's will. That's not true. I just read the, the, the uh, scripture that says that the Lord wants our days to be as the days of heaven upon earth. You know, God created paradise. That's God's will for man. And, 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 and he put man in the Garden of Eden. There was no disease in the Garden of Eden. There was no sickness in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden. There was no trouble in the Garden of Eden. There was no shortage of gold. Said the gold was good. There was no shortage of vegetation and good drinking water. You know, everything that man wanted, he had an inexhaustible supply of it. And God, I, we're going to read the scripture. God said he could eat up from all the trees in the garden, except for one, except for one tree. So he had an, an inexhaustible uh, a supply of food that would last a, Eternity, forever, you know. And the temperature there in the garden, he, he didn't have. He he went out to say, "Oh, it's just too cold." Whoa, ah, uh, we don't know. We're gonna have to start electrical equipment or something. No, he didn't have that problem. He didn't say, "Oh, it's so hot here. We need a air conditioner." Oh, 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 no. The temperature was in the garden was perfect. Hallelujah. That's God's will. You know, and, and what I in 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 uh Malachi chapter three verse six say, I'm the Lord, I change not. I'm the Lord, I change not. God, the same good God, the God that created everything and, and it was good. We're gonna read it and he and he saw that it was very good and he made it for man and put man in, in inside of the garden and put man in charge and, and man didn't have no no debt in there. Man wasn't worried about how I'm gonna pay my bills. Man didn't have no bills. <laughs> he, he wasn't worried about, oh, why am I going to get some supplies for the children? Supplies was there. Whatever he needed or wanted, it was already there. That's God's will for, for, for mankind to be wealthy and rich and have, uh, or to be enriched, hallelujah, enriched in everything to all bountifulness, hallelujah, hallelujah, and to be healthy and strong all the time, not not sometimes, but all the time. God does not change. His word does not change. Hallelujah. 
It is God's will that our days be inclusive of peace. Man was not in the God's word. Oh, I don't, man was not saying, I don't know whether these plants are going to grow or not. Ah, woe is me. Man wasn't saying that. Man wasn't saying, oh, I believe some storms going to come and the hurricanes. And... No. Man was, had peace and was in peace in the God. That's God's will. Hallelujah. It is God's will that our days be inclusive of peace, joy. Man went into God and said, and said so what you crying about? This thing is bad. No, no, man wasn't doing that. Joy all the time. And he didn't have nothing to be sad about. Everything was right. Everything was good and very good. I'm going to read the scripture for you. I know the prayer says, I got to hear that from the word of God. You will. I'm going to give you scripture for it. I know how folks, and that's the way I am too. Just don't tell me something. Prove it. Give me the word for it. Give me God's word. I'm going to give it to you. Hallelujah. Uh, it is God's will that our days be inclusive of peace. That's all the time. Joy. Abundance. And I know it, I've already proven it by what I said, but I'm going to read the scripture. In the Garden of Eden, there was no shortage in there. Man didn't say well, there's going to be a little fruit this month. I don't know what we're going to do next month. I don't know. Maybe we can bar some. Or I don't know. No, it was abundance in the garden. Malachi 3 6. I believe it's Malachi 3 6. I said, I'm going to go with people. Look, I'm the Lord. I change now. I got to make, when you say something, you got to make, gotta make sure you're speaking the word of God saying it exactly like God said. Go well, with Malachi 3 6. Because, see, if it says in Malachi 3, 6, I'm the Lord, I change not. By him, you know, creating a garden and putting man in there, in the garden, and we see how it was uh, in the garden, then that's God's will for eternity for man. Hallelujah. No matter how things might look down in your life, friend, I'm telling you what God's will is for your life. Because he's the Lord and he, and he doesn't change. It's God's, will for, he, it's God's will for everybody to be in heaven. Apostle, everybody be in heaven? No. Because there are folk that refuse to go. But it's God's will for them to be there. Hallelujah. Malachi 3 6 says, uh, For I am the Lord, I change not. Hallelujah. That's good news. So now listen to my statement. Because everything that happens is not God's will. You know, some folk will tell you. And you know what something bad happens. Will the Lord? You know, trying to come through town and don't need nothing standing. Maybe one or two people, you know, leave out, out of this, you know, was spared, um, you know, destruction. Maybe they lived and everybody else was destroyed. And then the folk come out and say, well, the Lord come through to teach us a lesson. <laughs> Lord didn't have nothing to do with that. You know, but uh, so everything that happens. Well, where did it come from, Apostle? The devil. The devil. I know this, this is a strange term to that person. I say the devil. They act like they've been going to church for 30, 30 years. Act like the devil. Like, like who is he? What, who is he? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this statement again. It is God's will that our days be inclusive of peace, joy, abundance, health, safety, and pleasure. You know, in the garden, Adam walked about in the garden. He didn't. You know, he was walked around in safety all the time. There was nothing to hurt him. Could not destroy him. Could not hurt him. Hallelujah. Psalm, 10, uh, uh, Psalm 103, verse 2 through 5 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. We, we got God's benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. You have to tell yourself that sometimes. You know. Just tell yourself, so, talk to your soul. Say, uh, bless the Lord, so, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. See, if you've done wrong, you know God. He's a, he, he's a forgiving God. Who healeth all thy diseases. You know why God healeth all diseases? Why, Apostle? Because in the garden, there was nobody sick in the garden. There was no disease of sickness. Sickness in the garden. Because God, God didn't want folks sick. He wanted them healthy, strong, and vibrant. Wanted them to have vitality, vigor, stamina. Hallelujah. Because God is the 
good God, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with love and kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things. You know, his word are the good things that he satisfied our mouth with. And, and, and what happens when our mouth is satisfied with those good things? So that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. That's how you can be out there, you know, you, you be running and uh, you won't be weary. And the young folk will be just passing out, you know. But you're not there. You done ran 35 miles. You're still running. You know what I mean? And, and you know you're 87 years old. And the, the young folk, you know, that, you know, athletes, professional athletes in good shape, they passing out. They can't take it. And then you walk and folk, I, I, I can't. Now, we done walked 25 miles. I can't go no further. I can't go no further with your apostle. And they faint. But they that wait upon the Lord shall... Renew their strength. Hallelujah. Uh, and it says, so that you, you know, who satisfy thy mind with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. You know, Abraham, I think he was, what, almost 100 years old? <laughs> and and uh, God renewed his youth. He got a baby. <laughs> satisfied their mouth with it, it were a uh, good thing the next thing you know the body was back alive and functioning well long before you you heard a little baby cry I'm gonna move on third John verse 2 beloved I like this I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper it's God's we are supposed to be prosperous above all things it's, he created the God Everything in the garden was prosperous. There wasn't no lack, no shortage of any good thing in the garden, in the garden of Eden. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. God's will for man. God created paradise for man and woman. Hallelujah. And God does not change. He desires good things, the best of things, and goodly uh, states of being for human beings. I might say, the, uh, let me make that statement again. God created paradise. Yes, he did. And, he, you know, he created the Garden of Eden. For man and woman. And God does not change. change. He desires good things, the best of things, and a goodly state of being for human beings. God wants us to... Above all things to prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. Hallelujah. It is God's will for the human race to live healthy, prosperous, and forever in a paradise of safety, prosperity, and well-being. Man defied God's will in the Garden of Eden, yet... It is still God's will for mankind to live forever with him, to be safe, healthy, and abundantly rich always. God's will didn't change because of the sin of Adam. God didn't say, well, that's it. Man didn't made a mistake now. Now the whole human race will be in the lake of fire. That, that's it. Just close the curtain. Pull, pull a curtain on this. Cut! God didn't do that. And I say cut, you know, people be making moves and they cut. No, God didn't say that. The lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. The redemption for man to, to bring, you know, man back to God, you know, to reconcile us. Jesus was in, God was in the world in the person of Christ Jesus to reconcile mankind to himself. The blood of Jesus has reconciled us uh, unto God. We are back friends and family of God Almighty. And it's God's will that we have the best, the best of clothes, the healthiest of bodies, and the healthiest of children. Hallelujah. 
to have the, the best and material things. I'm, I'm going to give it to you in the Word of God. To be all wise, have all wills of knowledge and understand, to understand all things. And for you single men to have the most beautiful wife, the most uh, virtuous wives here on this planet. Hallelujah. The daughters of God. Hallelujah. And for you young ladies out there too, for you to have godly husbands. Hallelujah. Uh, God's will didn't change when man sinned. God still was good, and he's always good. It is not God's will for mankind to be absent of any good thing, nor any perfect gift. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31 says, And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. Everything God made was very good. It is, it is God's will for man to be blessed, to be dominant over the earth, to be dominant over everything upon the earth and to be the dominant over the function of the earth. I'm going to say that again. It is God's will for man to be blessed, to be dominant over the earth, to be dominant over everything upon the earth, and to be dominant over the function of the earth. Let's read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 through 28 to prove what I just said. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. Let man have dominion. Let man be in charge of the earth and over all the earth and everything upon the earth. That's what God said. He put man in charge. He said, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he, him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them. It's God's will for us, mankind to be blessed. Thank God all Christians are blessed. I'm blessed, friend. I'm going to tell you about the blessing and what the blessing will do in your life. Hallelujah. When you operate in it by faith. And we operate in everything in the kingdom by faith. We live by The just uh, shall live by faith. I believe that's what it says. The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Uh, it, God And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful. Friend, whatever we do, I'm talking to you, a Christian folk. Whatever we do, it's fruitful. <laughs> whatever we do, bear fruit. And that's true. Some people are getting fruit, but it's not the kind of fruit they want. They keep saying, Oh, why do I have this? Oh, why do I keep getting this? Oh, I don't know why I keep getting it. So I get this all the time. And then they say, Of course, why am I getting this? And you know what I say? I say, Well, uh, <clears throat> You know, I, you know, because I, I love folk. I say, uh, what seed are you sowing? They say, what? Well, what are you talking about? Okay, in order to be getting this specific harvest that you say you're getting all the time and it's negative, it's not what you want, you had to be sowing a seed. Because, now what, what do you say you, 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 you're getting all the time? I pass every man that come in my life. He just abused me and mistreat me. I don't know why every time a man come in my life, he got to just abuse me. I don't know why I attract folk like that. I can't understand why I always have something like that. How come I can't never get a good man? I just can't understand. I said, well, it's because of the seed that you're sowing. You're sowing the seed of a bad man. You're calling for a bad man to be in your life. You say that's all you have is a bad man in your life. And then when you see the bad man in your life, you get to scratch your head and say, okay, why is this bad man in my life? <laughs> He's there because you keep producing that. You keep producing that. You keep bringing that to pass. You keep saying that you have it, and you keep having it, and then you wonder why you have it when you say you keep having it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Be fruitful. I said, we, you know, we're, we're fruitful. Some people get in the kind of fruit that, you know, don't want, you know. Like you hear people say, and I'm just giving an example. I don't know why I never have enough money. I can almost make it through the month. But then, you know, about that second or third week, then, then I, I ain't got no more money. I don't know why my money go. Money just, I just can't keep no money. See, no matter, and I work two or three extra jobs, and I still can't, just like I can't hold no money. I just don't know. I never have enough money. How come I don't ever have enough money, Apostle? Sometimes I ask them to repeat that. 
I said, would you say that again? You know what I like to do? I like to record things so I can play it back because I love people. I want them to hear what they're saying. Say, sometimes folk don't hear what they're saying. You no, know, Jesus said, he that has an ear, let them hear. All the folk have ears. <laughs> people got ears. Sometimes folk not hear what they're saying. So, you know, I, I, I said, would you? What you say? What is your problem? Apostle, I will never have enough money. I work three extra jobs, plus I got a steady income coming in. It's real nice, salary, but 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 the, but the second or third week, I, I, the money's gone. I don't know why, but I always leave. I never have enough money. I just don't never have enough money. I don't have enough money to meet my needs. I can't. I, I can't. It's things I can't do for my children. I don't know where I'm going wrong, but I just don't have enough money. I said, uh. The reason you don't have enough money is because of the seed that you're sowing. And I, and I say, well, first of all, the kind of tree that you are. What you talking about, apostle? <laughs> I said, well, you see, you're known by your fruit. A tree is known by his fruit. I said, what is he talking about? <laughs> You don't understand why you'll never have no money, enough money. You better listen. I said, you better listen. See, a tree is known by his fruit. I say, you're the kind of tree that don't have enough money. <laughs> you're the kind of tree, no matter how many jobs you get. You, and, and, and the second or third week of the month, the money is gone. You're that kind of tree. And as long as you're that kind of tree, that's the kind of fruit you have. Uh, a tree is known by its fruit. And see, and, and, you, and you identify yourself as that tree. So you're going to always have that fruit. You know, you, you need to be another tree. You need to be a different kind of tree. That's what I see. <laughs> I'm going to move on. But anyway, God said be fruitful and multiply and replenish. That's a powerful statement, but I'm going to move on. That word replenish, I'm going to move on. Replenish the earth, that's, that's a powerful statement. Uh, and subdue it, that's another powerful statement, but I'm going to move on. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fire of there and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That's a powerful statement, but I'm going to move on. Genesis chapter 2 verse 19 says, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. See, God had to bring him to Adam because he had given Adam dominion. And whatever Adam called, that is exactly what it was. And still is. Man's calling things every day. You know, people call things. Sometimes people <clears throat> get on their phone. And they start calling. You know. And I don't know why someone would call somebody, apostle. I don't know why a person would get on the phone and call somebody and be surprised if they answer. <laughs> I don't know why every time I call this guy, are you apostle or uh, J.J. Hawkins? I say, well, <clears throat> is that his number? Well, yes, yeah, his phone number. <laughs> well, every time you call him, you, you, you will get him. Right. People calling things, calling beings, people call spirits, and then wonder why people call the devil into the house and then one is in the house. I don't know why the devil, I don't, I don't know why my wife acting like that. <laughs> and see, before he got home, he called the devil out. Oh, yeah, you know, I, 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 I just, I, he, listen to this, this next time. I bet she, I, I tell you what she been, I bet she been looking at them soap operas. I bet she ain't did nothing all day long. Sit around and eat kid and stuff like that. And, and she, you know how big she gets. She already, you mothers she getting big and big. I tell you what, she just don't, she just don't care about the things of the Lord no more. I believe, you know, I believe, now he's the head of the house. He just giving the devil permission to come in there already. Say not the end of thing, huh? She, I don't think she had no interest in me, no romantic interest. I, I don't know. We might be headed to the divorce court. And I tell you what, then they get home. Hi, honey. She make all them fit. And he surprised that the devil is in his house. It was like. Some
somebody open the door for someone to come in and then be surprised that they're in there. That won't move on. Some people say, well, Apostle, that people ain't doing Yeah, they're doing it. Uh, are they doing it? It is not God's will for mankind to be sick, impoverished, nor cursed. Therefore, let us read the word of God to determine how and when sickness, disease, poverty, and death came upon mankind. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 through 17 said, And the Lord God took the man, took Adam, and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may uh, mayest freely eat. So you can eat from all these trees here. In the God. But, God said, but, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. One tree, God said, you can have every rose tree in the God. Just and eat of it. But this one tree, this one tree, God said, do not eat of it. That's what God said. Said, God told him, thou shalt not eat of it. Because God didn't want him to eat of it. Because he know death, sickness, and all this will come about. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. The first man, that is Adam, is responsible for causing sickness, disease, poverty, and death to come upon humanity. The first man is the cause of the curse that is upon the earth. And I'll read Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 19. You want to read that possible? I guess you don't want to read that. I'll read it. You want to read it? Genesis chapter 1, chapter 3, verse 1 through 19. That's a few scriptures. You can read that if you want to. And that'll tell us how the man brought the cause the curse to come up on the earth. Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 19. Mm -hmm. Genesis 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Number 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. For, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Fifth, for God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. 7. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they showed fig trees together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where art thou? 10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. 11. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? 12. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat of all the days of thy life. 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, 
and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. 16. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. 17. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. 19. In the sweat of, the, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and from dust thou shalt return. Well, we see that man is the cause of death, sickness, disease, poverty, and the curse coming upon the earth because of his disobedience to the Lord. Now, I want to bring to your attention how the woman was deceived in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. Here's what the enemy said to her. He said, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Well, see, first of all, God had made man, male and female, in his image and after his likeness. They were, they were of the God kind. Adam was the offspring of God. It tells you in the, in, in the book of Luke that he was the son of God. So by God being God and Adam being his son, he was already in the class of God. He was already of the God kind. So the devil came and he deceived the woman by making her think that she was going to get something that she didn't have. You know, what she already had. She, she was already just like God. He said, you'll be as gods. <laughs> when, she, when she was already, and there's only one God we know. Uh, and God said, uh, he made man in his image. See, man is a reflection of God. You see, man is just like looking at God. He said, man is made in his image after his likeness. Man has the character of God. And we're talking about the original man here before sin came in. And of course, now a person can be born again. And, he, you know, then he's, he has the fruit of the spirit, the character of God again, you see. But, yes, I want to bring that to your attention. So man is the cause of the curse and death being on, the, on, on earth. Now Romans chapter 5 verse 12 said, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. See, death came by sin. Once sin came in, it brought death with it. And, and, and so death passed upon all men, because for all have sinned. For that all have sinned. Now, uh, but yet, God's will hadn't changed for man to have abundance, to be rich, to be healthy, and to be uh, strong, hallelujah, and to be in a state of peace and joy at all times. It's God's will. Uh, everything that happens is not God's will, hallelujah. Praise God. Everything that happens is not God's will. You listen to some folk, and if you believe what they say, thank God we don't believe everything folks say. We believe only what God said. And then, we, then we'll know whether folk tell us the truth or not because we already know what God said. And if they're not saying what God said, we, we don't believe what they said. Let every man be a light and the word of God be true. Everything that happens is not God's will. You hear folks say, you know, that bad thing. Oh, the Tommy the came and killed all the little children. But God, you know, he loved it, and the God, God give it, and he take it away, and blessed be the name of the Lord, and the Lord needed some flowers in heaven. That's not the scripture. That's not rightly divided. <laughs> and, they, and what's so sad, the preachers now, that say stuff like that, don't even mention the, the, the destroyer, the thief, the killer. Don't even mention him. Well, I can understand why they would, because, they didn't, you know, if you resist him in the faith, he'll flee from you. The enemy will. But if you ain't got no faith in the word, I'll leave that devil alone for you. I can see why they say they ain't got no faith. Because every time he going to come up, well, God killed all the little children. That's not true. 
the thief. I'm going to read you the scripture. And that's the devil coming not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. They don't mention him. I can understand why they don't. They don't have any faith. Teaching the folk there not to have any faith. I'm going to move on. Everything that happens is not God's will. The good news is that God sent a second man to the earth to remove sickness, disease, ignorance, poverty, and death from people that will accept his pardon for sin. The second man is the Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed seed of Abraham. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 47 says, praise the Lord, the first man is of the earth, earthy, talking about Adam. You know, God formed man out of the dust of the earth. Hallelujah. Adam breathed into man's nostrils and man became a living soul. But the second man is the Lord from heaven. Christians are no longer under the curse. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now we're going to find out some of the things that's under the curse. Really all sickness, disease, everything that came in as a result of sin is a, a curse. Because you know God wanted abundance and had abundance. Oh, everything God had was good and very good for man. Abundance of everything. No shortages or anything. You know, life, continual life. Peace of mind, peace, joy. So, uh, but we're going to read and see some of the things that's written under the curse of the law. But, but we, as Christians, are redeemed, set free from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing, we're not cursed, we got the blessing, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 28, I'm not going to read the entire chapter, but you can read there and read about the entire curse. To find out what's all, you know, included in the curse. And I say anything bad or evil is, it, is included in the curse. But we set free from that. But Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 says this. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, didn't say some, didn't say one or two curses. Say, if you, if you, don't, if you don't obey his commandments, <laughs> it says, all these curses shall come upon thee. And overtake thee. Now, in, in, in verse 61 of uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, it says, Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, it says, Then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. In other words, all sickness and disease, all of them, even the ones that's not even written in them under the uh, curse of the law you know, is under the curse of the law. It's not written in the book here, you see. And what happens is, uh, in order to rightly divide this, is, is because God does not have sickness inside of him. But when God moves back, when God moves his presence, well then if God moves out, of, if, if, if God is not ministering prosperity to you, friend, you won't have none. And what little you, you got, That'll be taken away from you if you got any little thing. So the same way about life. If God moves away from you, can't nothing else uh, happen to you but death. Or, you know, and so if God moves health away from you, then, you know, sickness automatically starts coming into your body. If God is not keeping the city, I'm going to tell you the watchman might as well go ahead and watch uh, Wheel of Fortune or something. <laughs> because they're not going to see when the enemy come in anyway. When he coming, and the enemy, and they will be destroyed. He can't warn nobody if the Lord is not keeping the city. Hallelujah! The watchman waking up in vain. He might want to sleep in that night. Well, I'm just go sleep in, y'all. <laughs> Lord ain't watching the city. Hallelujah! 
So that's what I'm saying. So the word has to be rightly divided. Praise the Lord. In other words, when a person won't do what God say do, then what's waiting on them, they can't get it. If a person can't, uh, won't go where God tells them to go, and God got something in the place there for them, right there in that place, but they won't go there, well, then they, can't, they don't get it. They can't get it. It's just the way it is. Praise the Lord. If God say, here's life, and the person, no, 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 they, they won't have life. <laughs> where it is. And God said, choose. Hallelujah. You made your choice known when you're doing what the Lord said do. Hallelujah. When you said what the Lord said about it, you, you, you made it known to the Lord that I've chosen life for me and my house. Hallelujah. When you follow the devil's ways, you made your choice known to God that you want to curse. And that's what you'll get. Uh, Galatians 3.18 says, For if the inheritance be of the law, our inheritance is not of the law. It's not of, of, uh, of the law. Hallelujah. It is no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Not by saying, Abraham, you keep the law and, and then you'll have this, you know, now, and you have that. Uh, but now, the inheritance was given to Abraham by promise. Hallelujah. He got it by faith. Hallelujah. Galatians 3.29, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16 through 29. Uh, I'm trying to, let's see. Praise God, I'm going to read that. Galatians 3, 16 through 29. It's very important that I read it. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Uh, 360, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not into seeds as of many, but as of one. Talking about Jesus Christ, the seed. And to thy seed, which is Christ. But see, when we come into Christ, we are accepted as the seed before God. We are that seed. He's not talking about uh, plural as many but singular as one seed. So we are accepted when we come before God in the throne room, it's as Jesus is coming there to, to you know, ask, uh, request something from the Father. Of course, the Father always grants whatever Jesus requests. He's never told Jesus no. Hallelujah. So, now that's good news. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not into seeds as of many, uh, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed, talking about Jesus, should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verdict righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture had concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterward be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to, was our schoolmaster, whether, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. We are no longer under the law. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then 
Are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise? So the promise that God made to Jesus is, is the promise which, which is uh, Abraham's seed is the promise that he made to us. And as we are in Jesus, of course, uh, then our promises of him, our promises of God in him, in Christ, are yea, yes, are uh, amen, so be, hallelujah. So, so anytime you go to the Lord, you already know what the answer is. Y-E-A, that's what it says in the Bible, yea, which means yes. And amen. You know what amen means. So be it. When you say, Lord, thank you for healing my body by the stripes of Jesus Christ. You already know what the answer is. God said, yes. There it is. Anytime you, you go to the Lord, say, Lord, I, 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 about your house. Lord, I thank you for bringing peace in my house. There it is. Why? Because all the promises of him, hallelujah, in Christ Jesus is yea and amen. I know this in the Bible. I know this in the Bible. It's in Corinthians, hallelujah. Uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, 2, 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, this is Abraham before God gave him the name Abraham. His name was Abram. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I like this. God said, I'm going to bless you, and you'll bless it. You'll be a blessing. You know, it, it, it's a great thing to be blessed, and it's great. It's a great thing to be a blessing. Somebody say, here come a blessing. Say, like Apostle Hawkins. They say, man, I, 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 I know he'll, get, he'll help me out with this, man. Why? Because the man is a blessing. So I'm going to go see Apostle Hawkins. He's going to tell me what I should do about that. Why? Because the man is a blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I will bless them that bless thee. person can get blessed by just doing something good for you. Hallelujah. God said, I will bless them that bless you. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him. Uh oh, somebody can get in trouble now. <laughs> curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. You know, God preached the gospel to Abraham. Hallelujah. That's the gospel. Genesis chapter 12, verse I mean, Genesis chapter 13, verse 2, and Abram was very rich. Look what the blessing has done. Look what the blessing has done. It didn't say Abraham was rich. It's all right being rich. God, very rich. God told, God told him before, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to read what the blessing has do. The blessing, I, I just got to tell it now before I can even read. The blessing of the Lord, it make it rich. It make it rich. Let the blessing make you rich. You out there trying to make yourself rich. Let the, relax. Let the blessing do the work. While you sleeping, the blessing out there working for you. Then you wake up and want to get, open the thing. Somebody's not going to ring the doorbell. Uh, uh, we we want to get off you $10 million for, for the idea that uh, we see you came up with. You say, well, pray. That's the work of the blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody walk up to you. I, I just, I'm just led to give you a million dollars. I, I don't know why. Then up, I ain't got no sleep in three days. You know how some folks, because they're trying to fight, you know, fight that uh, that suggestion that was given to them to give you a million. You know how some folks get I mean, I ain't, got, I ain't got no sleep in three days, man. Well, here's a check. Take it. <laughs> a million dollars. Bless the Lord and make a wish. But I'm going to read that to you out of the Word of God. It says in, in Genesis chapter 13, verse 2, and Abel was very rich in cattle. God is not a poverty God. People need to stop saying that. God is the all rich God, and He richly gives us all things to enjoy. I'll be listening to Bible somewhere too. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness. That's the God we serve. That's our Father. Our God is not a stingy God. The world is afraid because they know that money has been taken from them and put in the rightful hand. That's why they've been saying, telling the folk, you Christians are supposed to have no money. Because they, I don't know that the money belongs to the Christians. <laughs> <laughs> That's the that old devil out there trying to, you know, out there trying to deceive folk. And deceiving folk. And they were very rich in cow. He's very rich in silver. Very rich in, didn't say just rich in gold, very rich in gold. 
Proverbs 10, 22. It says what happened. The blessing of the Lord, it make it rich. And he added no sorrow with it. Hallelujah. You'll be able to enjoy it. I mean, it's God's will that we just have joy, gladness, hallelujah, peace, and wealth and riches, health and strength. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in him, even as your soul prospers. Genesis 15, 1 says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not! You don't have nothing to be afraid of, friend. You don't have to be afraid of mudslides, avalanches, tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, uh, uh, volcano, volcanic eruptions. You ain't got to be afraid of storms, thunder, lightning. You ain't got to be afraid of anything. Water can't even drown. I'm talking about you, you, you Christian folk. Fire can't burn you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. That shall no evil uh, come nigh thee. Neither any plague come nigh thy dwelling. I believe that's in the word of God, Psalm 91. God sure do. God protects his children. What a great protection package. <laughs> what a great health care package. Hallelujah. He says, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, protection, and exceeding great reward. Stop trying to get the money on your own. Get rid of your gimmicks and let God reward you. Genesis chapter 24, verse, I might not, uh, I don't think I'm going to finish this, but I'm going to get close as I can. Genesis chapter 24, uh, 34 through 35 said, and he said, I am Abraham's servant. Now Abraham's servant is speaking in concerning Abraham. And the Lord has blessed my master greatly. You know, God told Abraham, I'm, I'm going to make you a blessing. I'm blessing you and make you a blessing. And said that the Lord blessed him. Let me see what he said. Blessed him greatly. Then said the Lord just, you know, blessed him somewhat, but a blessing is a blessing, blessing. God blessed him greatly. And he has become great. And he had given him flocks, herds. That's the kind of blessing I'm talking about, friend. Some money in your pocket. Some folks say you're blessed and you, you don't supposed to have no money. How you going to be blessed and they ain't got no money? <laughs> Can't be your business. That ain't no, that ain't no blessing. Uh, and herds and silver and gold. Man so rich and he had men servants and maid servants and Camels and asses, he had transportation. He didn't have to just rely on his feet getting him everywhere he needed to go. God preached the gospel to Abraham, which is a message of prosperity, health, long life, protection, and wholeness that results from the blessing of God that is upon Jesus and all people that accept him as Lord. Yes, the gospel is a prosperity gospel and not a poverty message. Galatians chapter 3, 8. Galatians chapter 3 verse 8 says, And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. We are the blessed seed of Abraham in Christ Jesus, and we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Just got some good news for you. Now let us look at our inheritance that we have received as a joint heir with Jesus. Every day I look at my inheritance. Every day you should be visualizing your inheritance. Every day you should be walking about and you should be uh, making contact with your inheritance. Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. Here's what Jesus has received. So we receive the same identical things that he has received because we're joint heirs. It says, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power. Got all of God's power. I have received power. Christians have received power. Stop asking God for power. You already got the power. Use the power, friend. And riches, we got all of God's riches. We got God's riches now. And wisdom, now all of this is by faith now. Strength, we got strength, honor, and glory, and blessing. Romans chapter 8, verse 17, and if children then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs, heirs with Christ. The blessing is on Abraham's children. Hallelujah. And we are Abraham's children. Praise the Lord. God's blessing that make it rich in all areas. It is back on us. 
In order to see the fruit of the blessing, we must exercise our faith in God's blessing that is on us by saying what it is doing for us and by speaking the things that the blessing has done for us. I'll make that statement again. In order to see the fruit of the blessing, we must exercise our faith in God's blessing that is on us by saying what it is doing for us and by speaking the things that the blessing has done for us. I'll say it again. Because Christians are there are Christians that, that are blessed and they're not seeing the fruit of the blessing or they're not seeing the result from the blessing because they're not uh, operating in faith concerning the blessing. In order for the, the, the blessing to be uh, active and working in your behalf, you must cause that blessing to do its job by exercising faith in the blessing that God has put on you. And here's how you do it. In order to see the fruit of the blessing, we must exercise our faith in God's blessing that is on us by saying what it is doing for us and by speaking the things that the blessing has done for us. If we do not tell things how to be in Jesus' name, then they won't be that way. If we do not tell things how to be in Jesus' name, then they won't be that way. If we say our life is always in chaos, then our life will be in chaos. If we say our head hurts, is hurting us in the evenings, then our head will be hurting us in the evenings. If we do not tell things how to be in Jesus' name, they then they won't be that way. If we do not order certain things away from us in Jesus' name, then those things shall remain with us. That's right. Whatever you say you got it, that you don't want, but you say you got it, then you'll keep it. That's so true. I'm going to say that again. Whatever you say you got it, that you don't want in your life, but you keep saying you got it, you'll keep it in your life because you keep saying you got it. Hallelujah. If we do not order certain things away from us in Jesus' name, then those things shall remain with us. If we do not order ungodly things and unruly beings to leave our house in Jesus' name, then those things and beings shall remain in our house. If you don't tell the devil to get out, he'll stay in. If you don't make the devil get out the car, he'll ride along with you in the car. And he's going to be devilish because that's all he can be. Is devilish while he's in the car with you. If you don't tell the devil to get out your bank accounts and out of your, your finances, you'll keep messing around in that friend, you won't have nothing. You could go to the penitentiary. Because <laughs> you don't need the devil in your uh, uh, affairs at all. Everything that happens on the earth is not God's will. I'm coming to the conclusion. It is not God's will for young men to be killed by gang violence. The word of God says, Thou shalt not kill. So God has told the young men, don't kill other young men. Don't kill at all. Thou shalt not kill. So it is not God's will for young men to be killed by gang violence. So when you hear people say, well, it was God's will for the young boy to come home. That's it, when he was killed by, uh, in a gang bang that, uh, activity. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. It is not God's will for young men to be killed by gang violence. Everything that happens on the earth is not God's will. It is not God's will for young men to be killed while robbing banks or convenience stores. God continues to say, Thou shall not steal. Everything that happens is not God's will. Everything that happens on earth is not God's will. It is not God's will for women to be raped or abused. God says that love worketh no ill against others. God keeps saying that. Love working no ill. Love doesn't do anything evil against anyone. God say, love ye one another. If things happen on earth, it's not God's will. It is not God's will for children to be sexually and physically abused. It is not God's will for children to be mentally abused. Everything that happens on earth is not God's will. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God, you know, I have some folks say, well, that low-down person should be. I know just about time for they was going to get killed anyway. They should have been killed. Low-down as they was, I tell you, God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Hallelujah. It is not God's will for people to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. It's, the God, it's, the, it's not God's will uh, for 
people to be cast in the lake of fine brimstone. That's the devil's will for them to be cast in, in the fine brimstone. It is God's will that no man perish. I'm going to, 2 Corinthians 5.21, I'm going to read that. I'm going to just, I will conclude this message. I will conclude this message. Because I don't have that much more information left. Five, uh, 2 Corinthians, what I say, 5.21 says, For he had, God had made Jesus to be sin for us. He took and put all our sins on Jesus. That's what God did. Who knew no sin. Jesus had, didn't know no sin. He hadn't done no sin. He said, uh, That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It, for God so loved the world. Hallelujah. I got to read that first John. I got to read that. For God so loved the world, loved everybody in the world, the whole world, all folk, white folk, black folk, red, brown, yellow folk, rich folk, poor people, educated folk, uneducated people, the little children, old folk. John chapter 3, it says in verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him, in Jesus, should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that's how much God loves us. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn it. He didn't send Jesus here to condemn it. Jesus didn't come here and say, well, I'll tell you what, all y'all get. Now, the sinners for this is hellfire. I'm finna light up and we all go, no, Jesus came here to save the world. But friend, next time, you know, the white throne judgment is coming. Uh, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God sent us a savior. He that believeth on Jesus is not condemned. But he that believeth not, that's why I keep telling people, either you accept Jesus or you got a, a place waiting on you in the lake of fire. It's all true. Some folk don't want to hear it, you know. I know, you know, some folk don't want to hear the truth. That's what it is. But listen to this. He that believeth on on, on Jesus is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Already condemned. See, I don't want people in condemnation. That's why I, I, I you know, I, I cry out loud, repent, repent, and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It says, because he had not believed, he's condemned because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. See? If a person don't accept Jesus, they automatically will be in the lake of fire and brimstone for eternity. Say, Apostle, this sure is just plain and simple to understand. You, you, God made it easy for you to understand. Well, you mean if I worship a cow, I'm going into the lake of fire? Most certainly, you'll be there. If you worship a cow, and, 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 and that, that's the way it ends for you, you'll be there in the lake of fire. Well, what about it if I just, if I just don't accept Jesus, can I do something? You'll be in the lake of fire, friend. God made this so easy. That's why I don't even have to call no, no, no uh, other religions out or nothing like that. Because if it's not Jesus, I don't care what the religion is. Because it might be 10,000 religions here on this planet. I don't know how many, but all of them is a, a certain and sure way into the lake of fire. Did you say that, Apostle? Let me say that again. So, you don't have to... Rewind this. All the religions. And we, now let Jesus is on the right. Now so I'm excluding Jesus from this. So all the religions that people serve is a guarantee they'll be in the lake of fire as long as they leave Jesus, don't accept Jesus, and stay in no religion. That's a guarantee they'll be in the lake of fire. Now you don't have to rewind the tape. Are you serving Jesus or are you one of, you know, one of those religions? Let me move on. Uh, it is God's will that no man perish. Hallelujah. That's why I'm telling you the truth, because I don't want you to perish. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, what, not willing that and it should perish. God don't want nobody to be in the lake of fire. He don't want no man to perish. He said, not only that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Hallelujah. 
God provided the blessing so that people would not be sick, diseased, in debt, poverty, or die prematurely. It is not God's will for people to be sick, diseased, or disabled. You can read Luke chapter 13, verse 16, verses 11 through 16, when the woman was bowed. She had been bowed over, and I believe it was for how many years? Well, I'm going to say over a decade she had been bowed over and could no way lift up herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her and he said, Daughter, hallelujah, uh, be loosed of thine infirmity. You know, and she was made straight and glorified God. But, you know, some of the folk had a problem with that. You know, but he said, I'll not to see, that's it, seed of Abraham. I'll not to seed of Abraham, daughter of Abraham, or son of Abraham. Be loose from this bond. See, can't no bond hold the seed of Abraham. Now you gotta acknowledge you the seed, and by faith you gotta say, God, I'm the seed of Abraham. Whatever it is, you got to let you go. If for the only thing can have a hold of you is the blessing. Can't no curse hold you if you're the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. That's the gospel truth. And to prove that, read further, read Matthew 8, 17, read Matthew chapter. 15, verse 21 through 28. Zacchaeus, Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house. I believe, yeah, Zacchaeus' house. And he told him that salvation had came to his house. Because he said, he's a son of Abraham. You got the blessing if you see the Abraham. It is not God's will for people to die prematurely. Psalms 91, 16 says he, he satisfies us with long life. Hallelujah. That's good news. Poverty is, is uh, a killer. I'm, I'm a proof it. Poverty is a killer. God didn't create poverty. Everything in the garden was abundance. It says in Proverbs 10 15, Proverbs 10 15, the destruction of the poor is their poverty. Poverty is a killer. Hallelujah. John 10 10 says, the thief. Coming not but for the steal. That's why the devil won't folk in poverty. Well, you Christian folk don't supposed to be prosperous. Y'all supposed to be broke. This servant Lord don't have no money. Because he know poverty is a destroyer. This is work. He's a thief. He's the one that steal goods and stuff. Take stuff that belong to folk so that they won't have it. And folks say, oh, I wish I had some food. Say, if we don't get some food in a few minutes, we'll probably be dead and the folk die. From, from home, the devil smiled. Yeah. <laughs> the devil smiled. The devil steal folk money and all that. Got the destruction of the poor is their poverty. Proverbs 10 15. John 10 10 says, The thief, the devil, coming out but for the steal, he takes stuff so folk can die. And to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Everything that happens is not God's will. Simply because an action has occurred, that does not mean that it was God's will. You know, anything happened on earth, folks say, well, it was God's will. Yeah. And then you say, well, why would you say it? Because it happened. It never would have happened if it, if it wasn't God's will.
commandment that say thou shalt not kill and steal and all that out of the schools in the government. So, Apostle, what happened? A lot of killing started happening. So, I don't want to say it, Apostle. I'm going to move on. He removed the thou shalt not. So, that means that thou shalt. <laughs> move on. I'm going to move on. Hallelujah. Everything that happens is not God's will. Simply because an action has occurred, that does not mean that it was God's will. God's thoughts concerning us are not evil, but good. You can read Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Now I'm going to read this to you. I got to because I'm headed to a conclusion. This is all is good. It's all good news. And I know it isn't. You need it all. Praise the Lord. It's the word of God. The more we hear, the more we know we need to hear. But I, I love the Word of God. And uh, people need to pay more attention, give attention to the Word of God instead of watching a lot of TV that ain't about the Word of God. they got so many things to do, but they ain't got time for the Word of God. But then, but then here come trouble, and then they go, Oh, Lord! 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 Then they try to figure out, Oh, Lord, what should I do? What should I... Here's the answer book. All the answers are in here. Here's the answer book. Jesus, I just don't know what to do. He said, the answer's in the Word. Just then they said, uh, yeah, you know, some of you, but I know Apostle. <laughs> could you, could you tell me where? <laughs> could, you, could you tell me what book of the <laughs> They done found, they done found gold on it. God is 
such a rich God to us. This is our, this is our good news. I'm telling you. He said, Blessed shall I be when I come in. And blessed shall I be when I go out. <laughs> bless go out, bless coming in. You bless the in, you bless out. What about those folk that have to accept Jesus? They curse when they go out and curse when they come in. And they, they and they call them self cursing. They don't men them don't even know why they curse, but then you hear them speaking. So I don't know why this is so bad for me. I'm also in, when I come in it's bad. When I go out it's bad. I don't know why it just don't work out. Why is it like the why are people doing the like this? Why are they doing the like an apostle? And and then you know, and I said, Well you ought to come to the faith today. Oh, I ain't got time for that. Move up. <laughs> Move up. Blessed shall thou be, blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. Blessed shall, shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies to, that rise up against thee to be smitten before, their fa before thy face. Enemies will come up against you and God will let you watch this. God will watch this. But you know, the Lord will take care of the Bible over here. He said, watch. You said, ooh. <laughs> you know, uh, it said, The Lord shall cause that image that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command a blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. Storehouses! Abundance! You got to so much store houses. S T O R E H O U S E S. That's more than one storehouse. I learned that much in school. Houses, store houses. Command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand. Say, Apostle, you wrote a play, it's blessed. Say, Apostle, you wrote a book, it's blessed. God the command the blessing. Say, Apostle, you wrote a song, it's prosperous. It's all garnering great sums of money. Say, Apostle, I believe you're ready to do a movie. I'm thinking about it, but one thing I do know, if I do it, it'll be blessed. Say, how do you know that, Apostle? It, it, the Lord said, and it says right here, the Lord shall command the blessing upon all that thou settest thine hand unto. Everything. Oh, good God. This, 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 this faith instruction, video and audio cast, is blessed. God can command the blessing on it. Huh? And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. We are the blessed ones of God Almighty, and our days are as the days of heaven upon the earth. The windows of heaven are open. Oh God, windows are open over our lives, you know. I'm talking about the blessed, the seed of Abraham. You know, the ones that's in Christ, in the seed, in, in the spirit of Christ. The windows of heaven are always open. And, uh, and God has poured out, he's already poured out, the blessing that there is not room enough to receive. The great outpouring of the blessing and its fruits and its fruits continues to be in effect in our lives. We are the blessed children of God. Hallelujah. We are God's blessed children in Christ. God treats us exactly like Jesus. Well, this, when you look at us, you see Jesus. We in Jesus. You walk in there, you see Jesus coming in there, even though Jesus is already sitting on the throne. Because we are already there too. You know, he raises us up together, sitting there to pay. We walk in there, he look, he see Jesus. You know, you walk in there. You know, the apostle walk in there, I walk in there, he's he come my beloved sons. And who my will, please. Somebody said, Well, Apostle, I think you missed it last week. That ain't got nothing to do with it. You mean God's will, please? I mean in the spirit of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus, in the spirit of Jesus. Whatever I ask for in his name. You know, I said, Lord, I'm, I'm going to get ready to He said, it's already yours. I said, Lord, I haven't finished. I know what you're going to ask me for. You, you always ask me in Jesus' name. And Jesus said, he's already done it. God is so good. <laughs> God is so good. 
It's in Jesus' name. We are blessed. We are rich. We are prosperous. We are healthy. We are strong. We are more than conquerors. We are always triumph in Christ. The victory is always ours. When the enemy come out against us, God will cause them to be smitten. So for us, we'll see it. He'll, he'll come one way and God will cause him to... He'll be leaving Saturn from the rest. He'll be getting away. <laughs> right. Because we're blessed of the Lord. Everything that happens is not God's will. Life is the blessing. And it's the work of the blessing. For the seed of Abraham that's, that you're talking about, that's God's will. That's God's will. Hallelujah. Oh. Love you. Talk to you next time.